Noon guys, blessings, it's Amanda. I'm coming to you on a Friday afternoon. All glory be to God, Waddles is getting better. That the power of God and Jesus Christ is prevailing. I'm actually going to take you over to him. Hold on. Waddles, he's in the aviary with Grace. Say hi, bud. Say hi. You want to say hi to everybody? Say hi. Hold on. Let's see if I can get him for you. There he is. Hold on. We're coming closer. There he is. Oh, you want to say hi to the camera here? Let's get a good shot of you. So see, he's beginning to lift his head. You see? Praise the Lord. He's beginning to lift his head. He's getting better. Say hi. His head was on the floor two days ago. So this is a drastic, amazing improvement within a very little amount of time. Say hi to everyone. They're all praying for you, bud. Aw, say hello. And Grace is running around the room. So I just wanted to show you that Waddles is improving. All glory be to God. The power of God is at work. And I thank you all so much for your prayers. There is so much power and agreement. It's incredible. And I wanted to continue where I left off on the last video because I heard in the spirit the word airborne. Now, that airborne can either mean airborne, A-I-R-B-O-R-N-E, -A like a virus is airborne, or it can mean like air space borne, like something is airborne, like an eagle or a plane. However, for the sake of what I want to talk about, uh, in the terms of airborne, it being spelled with an E like a virus, this is the terms I'm going to talk about today uh, when I heard that word, okay? So, and I wrote it down here and on my computer. So, what happens when our words become airborne? So, they leave our mouth. They go into the atmosphere. They go into the spirit realm. What happens? Well, what happens when a virus becomes airborne? What happens if you have a group of people in a house and a virus, okay, will say something of a flu-like nature, becomes airborne? What happens? That virus now has the ability to afflict everybody else in that house, correct? And what would get one person sick and not another? Well, there's varying factors. There's immune system, there's diet, there's resistance, there's how much they're in the house and around the person that's sick. Uh, there's how much disinfecting is going on in the house, right? All those factor in to how much dominion that flu virus has in that home. Okay, it's the same with our words. When our words become airborne in a home, they have the ability to affect others' souls and spirits. They have the ability to take root in other souls and spirits in our home, at our workplace, our friendships, our families. Has the ability to take root and infect. Now, what would allow it to infect versus it being blocked? Well, that's where our vigilance comes in. Just as when a virus is airborne, if we start up our vitamin C intake, our vitamin B12 intake, our fruits and vegetables, we start disinfecting everything, we start being very careful about what we're touching and how much we're around that person, the percentage of that virus affecting us goes way down. Why? Because we are going on the offense. We are using wisdom and doing things that would prevent that virus and give that virus less and less a door into our body to afflict us. It's the same with our words. So if somebody around you is very negative, okay, well, you can do things to combat it because that negativity has the ability to affect other people. It has the ability to give the enemy legal doors, not only into the person's life who's speaking it, but into the people's lives around them. Okay. So if somebody is speaking negativity, 
we, as believers in Jesus, can do a few things. We can A, cancel those words in the name of Jesus, cancel all legal rights in the name of Jesus. We can also limit how much we're around that person. We can ask the Lord once every 24 hours, Father God, in the name of Jesus, put your whole and complete armor on me today, I ask in Jesus' name, amen. Once every 24 hours, you can pray that your armor is on. You can also disinfect, loose things from your soul that shouldn't be there. Bind to your soul what should in the name of Jesus as an act of your will. That's you disinfecting like you would use Lysol wipes to disinfect your home from a virus so that virus isn't hanging out on countertops and appliances and furniture just waiting for some unsuspecting person to come along and touch that area where there's contact and then the virus has a new host. It very much works that way in the spirit realm and it works with our words. So when our words become airborne, okay, or somebody's words become airborne, we have a choice, okay? The person speaking it has a choice, whether to speak life or death. Proverbs 18, 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Father God, I just ask in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, as we continue this video, Lord, we honor that your son died on the cross to save us when we didn't deserve it, Lord. We come to your throne as your children, humbly, Lord, but boldly, Father God, asking for revelation, wisdom, knowledge, and insight, Lord, that'll bring us into a deeper walk with you, that'll Help us understand truly, Father God, when you say you have given us the power to tread upon serpents and scorpions against all the power of the enemy, so nothing shall by any means hurt us. Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ, you are welcome in this place. In Jesus' name, amen. Wanted to do that before I continued. Proverbs eleven seventeen: your own soul is nourished when you are kind, but you destroy yourself when you are cruel. So, okay, so... When somebody is speaking negativity around us, just like if somebody has a virus, that's how we have to treat it. Like they are infected. They are infected with negativity, with oppression, with bondage, with anger. They can be infected with a lot of things. And we treat it the same way. We disinfect ourselves to make sure we're right with God. Okay? That closes a legal door for the enemy. We cancel any and all words in the name of Jesus Christ that people might be speaking. Okay? over us or against us. Command the power of those words are broken in the name of Jesus, loosed in the name of Jesus, and cast to a dry place and bound and banished there in Jesus' name. We can also, every day, Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, I take authority and cancel every contract, assignment, scheme, plot, hex, vex, potion, manipulation, witchcraft, and the like, because it all goes on, that the enemy might be trying to bring against me, my home, my marriage, my health, my body, me, my success, my, you could just go down the list, okay? My spiritual nourishment and cancel it in the name of Jesus and command those assignments are all loosed from your life and cast to a dry place in the name of Jesus Christ, bound and banished. And then you can ask the Lord to loose the holy angels of all rankings and divisions to shred those assignments and put the enemy and those unclean spirits on the run. So we can do that too. Okay, vitamins. Like when someone has a flu, we can take extra vitamins, right? To nourish our bodies, to help our bodies fight better. Well, our vitamins, our nourishment is the word of God. If somebody is doing that around us more, we can crack open the word of God more and nourish our soul and spirit to make sure we are getting highly nourished, to make sure our spiritual eyes and ears are open, and that we are asking for and receiving in the name of Jesus the wisdom of God, the knowledge of God, the revelation from God, the insight from God, the wisdom from God, the discernment from God, the ability to discern spirits from God that we are asking for and receiving these things in Jesus name so that we are able to identify and react quickly. So if somebody says, you know that term, oh, you poor thing in the name of Jesus Christ, I cancel that you are not speaking poverty over me. The Lord says my cup runneth over. The Lord says 
that I shall not be in want. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want in Jesus' name. I shall not have a spirit of poverty or anything else attached to me or my life in the name of Jesus Christ. That is canceled. Or if somebody says, oh, you're always sick. In the name of Jesus Christ, I cancel those words. I am not sick. I am whole. I am healed. I am well. I am walking in divine health in the name of Jesus Christ. My soul is nourished. My body is nourished. The Lord is protecting me. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. So you can do these things because the quicker you shoot it down, it's okay. So in Israel, they have a defense system, okay, for weaponry. The second they get wind, there's an incoming missile. What do they do? They don't wait till that missile's right on top of them. Nope. They immediately fire back and destroy that missile. So that missile doesn't even have a chance, that enemy missile, to get anywhere near Israel or their people, right? They fire immediately. They react immediately. They do not wait. In this day and age, that's how we have to be. Okay, just like if somebody walks in your house with the flu, do you sit around and wait? No, you're immediately disinfecting. You are taking extra vitamins. You're taking your extra vitamin C. You're praying. You're declaring in the name of Jesus. You will not be sick. You are whole. You are well. That this virus has no power over you in Jesus' name. You are covered by the blood of Jesus. So you immediately, right, take action to prevent problems. You immediately take action to prevent problems. It's the same way when people's words are becoming airborne around you, okay? You can immediately take action. You don't have to wait. The enemy wants you to go, oh, it's just words. I can ignore it. That's what he wants you to think. Because the more that person's doing that around you, the more it's going in here, in your ears, getting into your soul and spirit, and the easier the enemy can use it to take root in your life. So, you need to have a plan, a game plan, when people around you are doing that. If you have to excuse yourself for a moment to cancel those words in the name of Jesus, to ask the Lord to put the whole and complete armor around you, ask the Lord in the name of Jesus Christ for a hedge of protection, you know, loose the warring angels in the name of Jesus Christ to reinforce the commands that you are giving, because yes, they will reinforce commands that you are giving, uh... You can do this every time people do this around you. Every time, because I will tell you, when you are in the middle of a dire situation, the last thing you need is people around you who are warriors, doubters, sneerers, angry, swearing, vomiting things out of their mouth that they, they shouldn't even be speaking, uh, speaking death, speaking hopelessness. The last thing you need around you are people like that. You know what you need around you? People who are speaking life and blessing and really taking their emotions out of it and going to battle. Because when a soldier goes to battle, what do they do? They are on a mission. They take their emotions out of it. Their eye is on the target. That's how Christians have to get. Christians have gotten and believers, followers of Jesus, disciples of Jesus have gotten way too lackadaisical about spiritual warfare, about the enemy, about fighting back in the spirit. They've gotten way too lax on this, okay? The second the enemy tries to fire, we should be conditioned to react, to react immediately, just like soldiers in a battlefield, the enemy fires, they don't sit around and go, oh, let's wait till they get closer before we do anything. They react. They go into their conditioning as soldiers. Their emotions are out of it now. And they are reacting based on the conditioning and training they have been given. That is what the Lord expects us to do. The enemy preys on our emotions. When he does things like this, he wants us to get angry and frustrated and pop off at the mouth and get angry at God and speak frustration and death and decay and corruption. And while you're doing all the work, pronouncing death over your own situation that you want God to come in and deal with, the enemy's sitting back laughing because he's getting you to do all the work. Okay, that's a key battle strategy. I am exposing right here something the enemy does a lot. 
that he's gotten away with far too long. And that is getting you to destroy your own situation, your own answer to prayer, getting you to hinder it and destroy it by reacting with your emotions instead of your spirit. We have to get more disciplined, okay, in the body of Christ about not reacting with our emotions, acting out of our spiritual discipline, okay? Because if we can take our emotions out of it and immediately attack the problem with prayer and and canceling in the name of Jesus Christ and the blood of Jesus being against the enemy and canceling what needs to be canceled, loosing what needs to be loose, binding what needs to be bound, taking authority, speaking life and blessing and hope, let me tell you something, you would see answers to prayer a lot faster and the enemy put on the run a lot quicker and you would see way more miracle signs and wonders and supernatural power surging out of the church, but this isn't taught. Okay, this has been put on the back burner and this is why you see so many are a hot mess in the church right now. Because they're not being told, take your emotions out of it. Your emotions aren't going to help you right now. Jesus and his word and you making the choice to use your tongue as a weapon against the enemy or as a weapon to destroy your own situation. What's it going to be? Okay, because Ephesians 4.29 says, let, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. What is helpful for building others up according to their needs? If somebody needs healing, you speak nothing but healing. Praise God they are healed. Praise God they are whole. Praise God in the name of Jesus. There is no sickness, disease, deformity, defect, growth in their bodies. They are whole. Their bodies are in divine order from their head to their feet. There is nothing that is sickly or, de or degrading or corroding in their body or on their body in Jesus name. They are a child of the most high God. They are healed. Jesus at the cross defeated this. It cannot stand because spiritual law dictates in the name of Jesus. The blood of Jesus defeated this sickness and disease. It cannot go another second because guess what? Many people entertain sickness and disease, and that's why it goes on longer than it should. They get too used to people waiting on them and doing for them, okay? And they get too used to just laying there while everybody else waits on them and has to change their entire lives to accommodate the bondage of that sickness or disease. And that's not how it should be. You should immediately, with the power of Almighty God, be attacking what is whatever that sickness or disease is, cursing the root of it in the name of Jesus, that that root has to shrivel up and die of that sickness or disease, whatever it is, that it has to shrivel up, that the legal entry point has to close in the name of Jesus Christ. And if that means you got to rearrange some things in your life, you got to give up some things you brought into your home that are ungodly, then so be it. Because the body of Christ has gotten too undisciplined in this area. And that is why the enemy is having a field day. And that is why people in the occult are taking advantage, okay, right now and going after the church. They should be running out of the churches wetting their pants. Because we have just opened up a can of you know what on them, loosing the holy angels of all rankings of visions in the name of Jesus, rebuking them in the name of Jesus. The blood of Jesus is against you. How dare you try to come against children of the most high God? Because we are heirs to the throne. You are not. You have partnered with darkness. In the name of Jesus Christ, I cancel right now every power you might be trying to conjure up. In the name of Jesus Christ, I cancel it right now. And command in the name of Jesus Christ, you are rendered powerless in the kingdom of darkness. You see, if Christians attack the problem that way, you would see movement a lot quicker. And that's why when something becomes airborne, you must immediately stop it cut it to the quick 
stop it in its tracks. If you'd said something, repent immediately in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, I repent for just speaking that negativity. I cancel those words in the name of Jesus Christ over my life, Lord. Father God, I ask in the name of Jesus, you help me bridle my tongue and tame my tongue to be used as a weapon, Lord, for your glory, not to assist the enemy in Jesus name, because it is about bridling our tongues and training our tongues. Okay. It's one of the smallest parts of the body, but the impact on our lives from it is huge. The impact in the spirit realm is gigantic. Okay. Because like I said, the Lord showed me what waddles. I didn't get upset. I didn't get angry. I didn't get emotional. I went into prayer immediately and praying in the spirit and declaring life. And within 24 hours, his neck was up, which is not really heard of with conditions like this. They say it takes a lot longer, but not with the Lord because things are accelerated. When you don't give the enemy an inch when he tries to do this, because he wants to get you riled up. He wants to get you angry and he wants you to waste time. So instead, the best thing to do to piss him off is to immediately drop to your knees in prayer and speak nothing but life because faith is the substance of things not, it, it's, faith is the evidence of things not seen and the substance of things hoped for. So you speak it and praise the Lord like it has already happened. It has already happened. The healing has already occurred. You praise the Lord like the healing has already occurred. Okay, you want the enemy to throw a fit. You want him to throw a tantrum because his little plan just backfired on him royally. And that's what you want because there is a reason why God gives us armor. There's a reason why he gives us a sword. Okay, that is sharp. Let me tell you something. A sword of the spirit is one of the sharpest weapons you will ever have in your hand. It is because it, why? It's the word of God. Okay. It penetrates the dividing line. It penetrates. Okay. It pierces. So you take that sword and you swing. And if you've got to write about a bunch of Bible verses on a piece of paper and read them every day along with speaking life, that's what you do. It is one of the sharpest weapons we will ever have is the sword of the spirit. The shield of faith and the sword of the spirit. And what you can also do is when the enemy is trying to come at you through somebody, in the name of Jesus, shield of faith up. And it will go up. It will go up. In the name of Jesus, shield of faith up. And it immediately goes up in front of you. And now those words are bouncing off of the shield of faith while you're canceling them so they don't hit you. Okay? Or that judgment over you is now hitting that shield of faith and not coming over you into your mind because what the enemy wants to do you see the enemy knows words are one of the only things that he can get rooted in your mind and in your spirit through getting through your ears it's one of the only things he can get rooted from the spirit into your mind and into your, okay, into your body and soul and spirit. It's one of the only things all words. Why do you think he has built an empire out of the music industry? Why do you think he has built an empire out of the music industry? Because those words he can get into here to root in here and in the spirit and then begin to change that person's habits and control them because that person is consenting and coming into agreement with those words. That's another thing. Do not come into agreement with the words. In the name of Jesus Christ, I do not come into agreement with these words. These will not affect my life. I will not accept it. I do not receive it in the name of Jesus. I do not receive those words. That's another one. I do not receive those words in the name of Jesus. I do not receive those words in the name of Jesus. I do not receive them in the name of Jesus. So, these are things you can do right now when you're dealing with an onslaught of negativity around you or when you're in the middle of a very fierce battle. But yes, that is why the enemy has built Hollywood and the music industry because it's all about words and influence and the power of suggestion. The enemy can suggest something through this, through a song or through a TV show, through people that have sold themselves out to him. Guess what? He can get a lot of people to be influenced and come into agreement with the kingdom of darkness. 
okay, and try to gain soldiers for himself while destroying people's lives. That is why these countries you see shootings in, these clubs you see shootings in, what's being played in these clubs? What are being played at these concerts? There are satanic artists who worship the devil, who have gone into countries where there have been shootings in the past year or two, okay? Packed out stadiums of people coming into agreement with artists worshiping the devil, and then they wonder why a madman walks in and opens fire. They all came into agreement. They accelerated it in the spirit realm. Same, you think, you think artists would have learned their lesson by now. They will the hard way, but they will. Uh, same thing with, oh, what else? Shootings in clubs and bars. People are going in, coming into agreement with the enemy in those clubs and bars with the music being played, with the perversion going on. And then they wonder why there's a surge in the spirit where then someone walks in and opens fire. They're coming into agreement with the agenda of the enemy. And they're all singing it together. And they're all in agreement together. And guess what? Power and agreement and darkness can be accelerated. And then you've got these mass shootings a lot of the time, okay? Because of what people are lining themselves up with and consenting to. Be careful what you consent to. That's why immediately, I do not receive this in the name of Jesus. I don't receive this in my life, in my home, over my body. I don't receive this in the name of Jesus. It will not prosper in my life. It will not come against me. Those words shall fall to the ground and they shall not take root in the name of Jesus or touch me or my life. You see, if we became that vigilant, we would see things change a lot quicker. We would see acceleration. That's why the Lord is giving us a clue. This is a season of acceleration. Come into agreement with that. Start taking your emotions out of it. Be a soldier and watch that acceleration happen in your life. God bless you guys. I love you all. I'll be back on in a couple of days with a teaching. I'm praying about what to teach on next out of the word of God. So I'll let you know in a couple of days. Keep the faith.